afternoon to all of you. I apologize for not being able to speak in Portuguese. I hope it's fine like this. Uh, just a few words about uh, Greed by Eric von Stroheim. Uh, it's a 1924 film which is pretty much famous uh, in the history of cinema for good and not so good reasons at the same time. The good reason is, it is, uh, is it a masterpiece? It's a ghost of a masterpiece. It's a trace, it's a remaining of the masterpiece, which is still something really impressive, uh, but of course, which uh, also uh, keeps the memory of much more, which was supposed to be the film von Stroheim wanted to make, and which is so far impossible to, to watch. The legend goes that only 12 persons have seen the complete version of Greek. Uh, and also it's a, uh, a, a momentum in the, in the history of cinema because it is maybe more significantly than any other one, the film which translates the uh, uh, coming, uh, the accomplishment of the power of the Hollywood uh, moguls, of the Hollywood uh, major companies' bosses over the artists, uh, the filmmakers, also potentially the, the, the actors who were, it was more balanced and with the uh, destruction of, of the original greed, um, the, 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 uh, the, the power is established both uh, legally and uh, let's say politically, uh, more or less. Until, until now it's, a, it's interesting that it's a kind of coincidence, I believe, but it is a meaningful coincidence. When, when you, while you will be watching Greed, I will leave the cinema and I will go to see A Deer Hunter by Michael Cimino, who is like uh, 60 years later, a kind of a, a late episode of the same story of the attempt of artists uh, to uh, make their way, uh, of course not, not with the Hunter, but the next film by Cimino, The Gate of Heaven, which will also be a significant episode of this relation, difficult relationship between uh, filmmakers and producers in, a, in Hollywood. Greed was a gigantic project in many in many uh, respects. It's based on the it's based on a novel which was a pretty much famous novel in the in the US uh, at the time. It was designed by uh, Eric von Stroheim at the time to be probably the most realistic film ever made so far in uh, uh, in, in Hollywood in the in the uh, uh, rising uh, American film industry uh, context, uh, especially because of the choice of shooting totally the film on location, and the location included uh, San Francisco at this time, which is uh, the main uh, place where, where the, the story takes place, but also uh, in a gold mine, and he went to a real gold mine, which is not so, uh, such an easy place to, to shoot. And even more significantly, uh, to Death Valley, where uh, the, all the end of the film uh, takes place, where he stayed for more than two months in the con terrible condition of Death Valley, and most of the crew uh, got ill or had to be uh, taken to hospitals, and etc., because of the toughness of the of the of the condition of, of shooting, for the sake of an idea of cinema, which is. Uh, very interestingly, at the same time, uh, totally uh, arrogant, let's say, uh, from a director's point of view, who uh, really sees himself as controlling everything, having a total power. Uh, the film was shot for nine months. The, though he, uh, though uh, Stroheim had an agreement with uh, the, the producer, uh, which was uh, Sam Goldwyn, uh, company at the time uh, that it would be uh, not expensive and then of course the budget went uh, over the mountain 
uh, and it could be done in a pretty short time, and, and it was shot endlessly. So it's not like to say that uh, everything Shoaim did is uh, nice or whatever. It's not in the terms of being nice or not nice. It's in terms of the vision and the uh, ambition of, a, of a, an artist who wanted to achieve something specific. And among these famous two Africans who have seen uh, the films, one of the great directors of this time, Rex Ingram, and others said this was the best film ever made at this time, and really praised it. So we, we have a reasons to believe it was, it had a meaning to, to, to uh, uh, make this attempt, which resulted in a eight hour film, which was the film, um, uh, Trohan shot approximately 80 hours of stop shots, of, uh, out of which he, he ultimately uh, edited his version, which is an eight hour version. This version is the version which has disappeared and which is now known as uh, the Grail of Archivist, since there is a story that somewhere maybe there is still a print of the original editing that might surface as. Maybe you know it happened with uh, Metropolis uh, uh, quite recently, and so, so there is this dream of, uh, and, be, and the story has been going, and every uh, major uh, uh, cinematic uh, director has dreamt to, to put his hand on it. Uh, Iris Berry in New York, or Henri Langlois in Paris, or Jacques Lelou in Brussels once believed that somebody was selling them the print, and then it was not. The, the right thing. Uh, so it, 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 it goes on. Uh, the, the, what, what happened because um, Stroheim knew how to deal with Goldwyn, his producer, and uh, managed to go through, go through the, the conflicts and the, and the difficulty. But what happened is that uh, during the process of the making of the film, the company, the Gold, so Goldwyn company, became MGM, the, it was, there was a merger of companies with a new uh, boss at the head of MGM, uh, which is the birth of MGM in 1934. Uh, and um, the boss is a, one of the, well, maybe the great figure of the uh, first generation of uh, Hollywood producer, Herbin Talbert. Herbin Talbert had fired uh, Stroheim to one year and a half before from another studio, Universal, where, because it, it had conflicts already, Dalberg wanted to be in control of what was going on and wanted to decide the length of the film, the decision of the directors, and the, and the storytelling. It's, it's about length, it's about commercial issues in the sense of the price, the cost of the film, and the, and the, and the the lens, because of course it affects the releasing condition, but it's also about the standardization of storytelling, and you want to, to eliminate uh, almost everything which gave the, the, the uh, unique vision of cinema by, by Stroheim, which was this kind of uh, dark, uh, complex, megalomaniac, maybe, uh, misanthropist uh, to, to, to a large extent and misogynist, uh, but uh, at the same time, uh, very deep and uh, trouble uh, perception of, of uh, human, of mankind. Uh, and, uh, and with, for instance, a no happy ending and with a lot of other uh, elements, which we know and for this also agreed uh, testifies for that, um, that uh, we, we know what, we, because we have the scripts, the original script, so we know what was the project by, by, in terms of storytelling, at least, by, uh, by, by Stroheim, and uh, we can see what was removed to take the film to a, the, the, the lens you, you're going to, to watch this, this afternoon. Uh, which is a uh, one, one hour of forty or so, or uh, which was the the, the, the the film which was released and which eliminated 
many uh, subplots because now there is a main plot which is pretty simple. Uh, it was enriched by a lot of uh, secondary characters and uh, subplots, which eliminated, eliminated something which was uh, very important in all Stroheim film, though it is not so often acknowledged, which is uh, humor. Uh, it is dark, it is uh, about a uh, uh, kind of delirium or uh, craziness or, or a potion at an extreme uh, form, but at the same time he, he had a lot of uh, back steps and uh, way to, to look at that and uh, irony, uh, which has been also eliminated to keep it in a more uh, unique tone. Uh, opposite to a multi multi tone work, and uh, it, among what it eliminated was uh, a lot of uh, the most uh, the openly uh, sexual uh, dimension of what was going on between between the, the, the characters. All, all of this um, left alive, so to speak, this this uh, ghost or this cripple very critical version uh, of, uh, of the uh, eight uh, uh, films. Later on, for the record, much later on, 1999, uh, when uh, this company named Ted Turner became right owners uh, of, of the uh, Greed, they made a so-called restored version, which is not the original version by far, but which is nevertheless the four-hour version, which includes uh, a lot of titles acknowledging what was supposed to happen written on the screen, because there is no, uh, there is no shot, so we don't have the image, and a lot, about 600 stills, photos, uh, which were found from the shooting, and we help to visualize and image it. It's a very weird experience because you are dealing with a, uh, yes, a kind of more and more uh, present ghost, so to speak, of, uh, of the real film, which we are still not able to, to watch. It's very obvious, I won't comment a lot about how much this film is accurate with the topic of Bigger Than Life, the symposium, uh, subject. It's about, uh, it, because in life is about the connection between uh, madness and creation. Uh, madness is everywhere in, in this film. Uh, it is in, uh, in the characters, and this you, you're going to see around this uh, uh, strengths of greed, of the, of the, of the uh, a passion for, 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 for money, which turns uh, uh, all the characters, and more especially maybe the feminine uh, lead ca character, uh, completely mad. Uh, but it's also about lust, and it's also about the relation between the city and the, the, the landscape, uh, and between the, the power of the elements at uh, levels or our intensity, which has something mad. Which is always on, under the sign of excess, but also uh, there is madness in Stroheim himself. He, one can say, he was a crazy guy at many levels. He had this kind, and with this, of course, has to do uh, with the, the topic of the symposium even more, which is the relation with creation. How his so-called madness, what one can call genius, at the, at the same time, but we're not sure what these words mean. Exactly, we just can approach them by this kind of uh, uh, actual translation. But what I feel is even maybe as interesting is Talbert, uh, madness of the control and uh, the, the will of power. Uh, and the idea is that what you're going to see as it is, is a creation. And to a large extent, if not totally, it is Talbert's creation. And it makes a wonderful film, because what you're going to watch is a wonderful film. The hell we know it's not the shrine film, and the creation is always uh, thought about, or often thought about as positive, but Talbert in a negative, but never the way 
uh, efficient way, created the greed which was actually screened and seen by audiences. It was not a huge success, but it was quite widely distributed and seen anyhow. Uh, it, it is the result of the uh, encounter of this uh, madness of the characters, the madness of the director, and the madness of the producer, and it created both this uh, artistic object, the greed we happen to have to deal with as it goes, and also the dream of the other one, the, the unseenable but nevertheless uh, acknowledgeable one, uh, which, is, which is also there, and this was created by all these madnesses uh, combined together in very uh, hard, tough uh, relation. Uh, no, none of this is uh, nice or pleasant, is it? It was fat and then, <coughs> as you may know, uh, uh, Strongham would do would manage to do one, one more film and then would be expelled, literally expelled uh, from, uh, from Hollywood and would have to, to come to, to France where he become an actor. Uh, so it, it is the, it, it's a fight and it's a, the result of a fight, of a defeat somehow, but with some uh, really beautiful and uh, uh, still, still uh, compelling uh, in terms of energy, in terms of, of visual and, uh, and uh, rhythmic and uh, um, uh, it's, it's a notion of acting, uh, if, if, which I do hope because it is important, uh, the film is screened at the right speed where it should be screened because it, it changes a lot in the, in the acting, uh, then at this, uh, at this level uh, uh, it delivers something which is an immense creation anyhow as a strange fruit of the madnesses which were at work uh, all along the, the process. Yeah, that's it. I wish you a good screen. Thank you.